One of the most memorable quotes about money and banking is usually attributed to Henry Ford. He said, uh, it's well enough that people of the nation do not understand our banking and monetary system, for if they did, I believe there would be a revolution before tomorrow morning. It's a criminal offence to counterfeit banknotes or coins, but a banking licence is formal permission from the government to create equivalent money at interest. Now, there are a wide range of perspectives on whether this is legitimate. The, economist, uh, the Spanish economist Jesus Huerta de Soto explains in his book money, bank credit and economic cycles, that it is positively a fraud, uh, a fraud which causes the business cycle. Positive Money, a British campaign group, are campaigning for the complete nationalisation of money production. Bankers, not just rogue bankers, but all bankers, even the best, the most honourable and the most honest, do things which would land the rest of us in jail. The third distinctive feature of banks is that which was highlighted by my uh, honourable friend, that banks create money. The vast majority of money consists of bank deposits. If your bank lends your company uh, uh, 10 million pounds, it does not need to go and borrow that money from a saver, it simply creates an extra 10 million pounds by electronically crediting your bank account or the company's bank account with 10 million pounds. It creates 10 million pounds out of thin air. Banking is fraud. Fractional reserve banking is fraud. It should be outlawed. Uh, banks should be required to keep 100% reserves against the money they lent out. Now, nor were these uh, aspects properly considered when the euro was set up. As a result, they established a currency and a banking system without giving the new central bank the powers to act as lender of last resort. It had to usurp such powers more or less illegally. That's their problem. The noble Lord Howard reminded Parliament, and indeed me, I completely forgotten that I was Shadow Chancellor when the bill that became the Bank of England Act 1998 was introduced. And he pointed out that I then warned the House of that, and I quote, with the removal of banking control to the Financial Services Authority, it's difficult to see how the Bank of England remains, as it surely should, responsible for ensuring the liquidity of the banking system and preventing systemic collapse. And so it turned out. And I added, setting up the Financial Services Authority may cause regulators to take their eye off the ball, leaving spivs and crooks to have a field day. And so that turned out too. I could foresee that then because the problem was not deregulation, but the regulatory confusion and proliferation introduced by the former Chancellor, resulting from failure to focus on the inherent stability of the banking system and to provide for it. Now, this failure to focus on the fundamentals... And, and last point, which I think is a very important one. Sovereign money redresses a major democratic deficit. Under the present system, around just 80 board members across the largest five banks uh, make decisions that shape the entire UK economy. Even though these individuals have no obligation or mandate to consider the needs of society or the economy as a whole and are not accountable in any way to the public. It is for the maximisation of their own interests and not to those of the national interest. Now, under, a sovereign, uh, under sovereign money, the Money Creation Committee would be highly transparent, we've discussed this already, and accountable uh, to Parliament. So for all of these reasons, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I believe that the examination of the merits uh, of, sovereign, of a sovereign monetary system is now urgently needed, and I would call on the government to set up a commission on money and credit with particular reference to the potential benefits of sovereign money, which offers a way out of the continuing and worsening financial crises that have blighted this country and indeed the whole international economy for decades. My bottom line on this is really that I want to live in a society where even the most selfish person is compelled by our institutions to serve the needs of other people. And that institution is called a free market economy, because in a free market economy you don't get any bailouts and you don't get to live at somebody else's expense. 
I'm, I'm very grateful to my honourable friend for getting away, and I congratulate him for bringing this really important yeah, subject yeah. to the attention of, of, of the House. Will he agree with me that this candy floss credit system that the state is presiding over, far from actually shoring up free market capitalism, replaces it with a system of crony corporatism that gives capitalism a bad name and undermines the very foundations of capitalism? Well, I'm very grateful, Mr. Speaker, because I'm delighted to agree with my honourable friend, and he is, despite the fact that I won't be seeing Nigel later. Um, he's, absolutely, he's absolutely right. Uh, in effect, they have a virtual monopoly, uh, something like 97% uh, over domestic credit creation, and it is the banks, therefore, the banks, which determine how money is allocated across the economy. Now, in a nutshell, the banks have too much power and they have greatly abused it. <laughs> Firstly, they have been granted enormous privileges since they can create wealth simply by writing an accounting entry on a register and they decide uh, who uses that wealth and for what purpose. I pointed out at the beginning of his speech that, that this is an issue that is not well understood by members of the public. Well, and I think he could, was mentioned later on his speech, but if he didn't, I'm going to add that this is an issue which is also not well understood by members of this House, by members of Parliament. Um, and, and I would include myself in that, and I suspect most people here would be humble enough to recognise that this is such a complex issue, this banking wizardry we're discussing today, that very few people really properly understand it. And if, yeah, please. I thank the Honourable Gentleman, and I totally associate his comments about ignorance, and I include myself in that. But it seems to me that the system is really broken. The system is broken 